In the video you're about to watch, I made one of these, and it'll be your chance to win this game at the end of the video. Keep watching. How are you feeling? You got rigs here, and congrats, you made your first repro. It's kind of missing something, isn't it? Something missing from this cartridge. We need a label for it. Uh, I had a lot of requests on how to make labels. Um, not necessarily how to design labels, and I do have a video that you can check out um, on how to design labels. However, a lot of people have asked you, well, how, how do you make labels? How do you cut them? Is there like a lamination thing? What special paper do you use? Um, and it's one of those hard questions. It's like, it's a video I kind of put off doing for a while because if you ask 100 people how they make labels, you'll get 99 different answers. Everybody has their own method. Everyone has their own technique. So instead, I will show you what I do and then you can either do that step by step um, or use some of ideas uh, where I show you how I print off and make my labels and then you can make uh, your own labels. Uh, not just for Nintendo games, but I'm also gonna show you for Super Nintendo uh, and both Genesis proper and Genesis uh, EA cards too. So here's how I design my labels. my labels I use this called a silhouette portrait this is a, uh, a it's a, a die it's a, a die cutter it cuts things there's a blade in there I'll show you inside and everything here pretty soon uh, but this is the device I use to cut my labels and I'll show you what I do over here on the uh, computer uh, the device it comes with or the program it comes with is called silhouette portrait and what it is is um, it'll not only print whatever you have here but it will cut along these red lines so you see these red lines when you um, if these red lines here um, I already pasted these in here. I'm gonna leave this file available as well. In fact, I'll, I'll save it here and I'll leave this file available that you can download if you use the Silhouette Portrait uh, yourself. You can use this for, this is Nintendo sized labels and I make mine a little bit bigger than standard issue, um, just a little bit bigger. But there's a Nintendo, uh, this is the Genesis EA cart because EA carts are slightly bigger than Genesis. Like here's a Genesis sized cart, here's a Genesis EA cart. If it looks taller, it's because you have to remember there's a fold line right there that folds over the top of the label. Um, same with the EA. EA is a much smaller um, top fold. And then this one right here is Super Nintendo. So we'll do kind of one of each here. Um, and really, you can just drag and drop the files. Whoa, that's super big. It's all right. You can drag it down here. And what the Silhouette Portrait does, it cuts where the red lines are. The Silhouette Portrait, the Silhouette Studio that I'm using here, it couldn't care less what is printed on the paper. All it says is like, I'm cutting this where these lines are, but when you put your labels over the cut lines, and you wanna make sure it's completely over it, because if, it, if it's not, it will, um, you know, it'll leave a, a white, you know, it'll leave like a white area where it should be. And that looks pretty good. I might make it just a touch bigger. So if you ever like run across like a repro label, where um, if you look along the edge, you know, like say uh, Flintstones 2, so that first one that comes to mind, like part of the wing is missing, is because they probably, you know, enlarged it just a little bit because they want to make sure that there's no white area there. So you want to make sure that that's completely covered up there. I'll look down here too. How far away is it from the edge? Oh, see, that's pretty good. So we'll try that. Okay, well, for the sake of the demonstration here, we'll try that one. Um, I'm gonna pull over a Bob's Burger. Usually um, the label template I use, and I do have a video um, where I show you how I, no, oh, I'll move that one instead. I do have a video where I show you how I design my labels. Um, it's about the same size, but a slight, slight bigger, just so it gives it that little extra wiggle room. And then this one, just for fun, uh, my buddy Rob is doing a box art documentary. So I turned that into a uh, label too. And I thought of doing that too. Like I could um, use this to design like, you know, I have me, my wife, my three kids. Um, it might be kind of cool to do like a shadow box, you know, five Nintendo games and we all have our own game. And I can put that up, you know, like hang it up on the wall or something like that. You know, make ourselves like in a black box looking thing. So three Nintendo games. Here's the Super Nintendo game. If I can, oh, come on you. If you see, let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little bit more. This one almost looks too perfect for the size. Like if I just just barely cover up the red one on that side, then it kind of shows up over here too. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. Super Nintendo games are a little more tricky. 
but they all print the same and they all cut the same. So just want to make sure that there's no red showing. I'll try that one. All right, we have a Genesis game. One of my favorites. Love me Sega Genesis. Here's a. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, back up, back up, back up. Yeah, way too big. Hold on, don't need to back up that much. This is the Sega Master System Brawl uh, homebrew that someone made. Very well done. We'll pop it on a card here. And... That looks pretty good on the bottom. Yep, looks all right. And then we have one more. I'm gonna do the uh, Genesis EA-sized cart. Do a Mega Man Wily Wars, just because there are so many great EA games. When I say great, I mean great to use for, like, sports games with batteries in them. That would be perfect for this uh, Mega Man Wily Wars. So, as you can see, down here, doesn't quite work. So I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. It's going to end up cutting more than I would like it to cut, but for this demonstration, I think we'll be okay. You know, I could have prepped this whole thing, so I wouldn't... But that way you can kind of see what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about. All right. So, that looks all right. We can do that. I can work with that. All right, so there you go. We have these here, and then from here, you want to print. Now, I'm going to print these off really quick. Um, however, just know that, of course, when you're making labels, this is what you're going to be judged on, never mind how well the game plays or anything like that. This is the first thing they see. This is their, um, this, this is their first impression. So you want to make the label as clean of a color as you can, as high of a quality of color as you can. So high quality, color, um, you know, unless you're doing it for yourself and just whatever for your collection, that's fine. But, you know, just make sure you print it off with a high enough quality. We're going to do that right now. And if you're wondering what printer paper I use, I use this Avery 8165. It is a full-sized, uh, full-sized shipping label. It's a full-sized shipping label, which means the entire page is a sticker. It's one big-ass sticker. So when you do this, you can cut them out. It's labels, right? I mean, that's it literally says label right in the thing. <laughs> so if you're ever wondering, this is probably not the very best paper you could possibly use, but it's easy for me to grab. I can pick it up at the local store. I think I, like Office Max or Office Depot, one of those kind of stores is where I buy these. And um, this is what I use. This is pretty good. I'm okay with this. Um, naturally, the colors on the computer may not match the colors that you printed out, um, but this is pretty good. Now, the next step is if you look at closely to like Nintendo cartridges, there's a light layer of laminate, a little glossy sheen to it. But what makes it so you can touch the labels and stuff and it won't rub off? Like uh, Game Boy games. Have you noticed that some Game Boy games have like a faded label from all the you know, fingerprints and all that on them? Um, we're gonna put a thin, thin layer of lamination paper. And we do that, I use this. <laughs> from Office Depot, it is this a letter sized lamination pouch. Uh, this is a thermal unit. You have to have the thermal unit to do this. There are um, self-laminating papers, which is just basically one giant sticker. Um, I bought some of those too. I've never used one, but we're going to use one today. So I'm going to do the self-lamination paper, um, and I'm also going to use the thermal one. As thin as you can get it. I got three millimeter, um, and that's pretty good. So I'm going to take it to the laminator right now. So here we have it. It is in the lamination pouch, and it will laminate both sides, if you're wondering about that. But the cool thing is when you cut it out, uh, then you're cutting the lamination on both sides, so it becomes a sticker. I put it through this to make it nice and safe. This thing is super loud, but all you have to do is start gluing automatically. It's a little bit hanging out there. I think I'll be all right. Get heated up. This takes a while. There you go. All right. This, we open it up here. There we go. Nice and laminated. So like I said, this is basically a giant sticker. <laughs> a giant thin sticker and I'm gonna try using this for the very first time I don't doubt it wouldn't work but let's have a look so it's you take this part off that gets it started and then always uh, label side away if you try peeling from the sticker side first uh, you will have the sticker fold up and I already there's like already what is that a fingernail oh it's on the other side all right you want to make sure this is as clean as humanly possible so try to go something like this and this looks like it would be a great idea if you're just using a pair of scissors yeah make sure you're perfectly aligned on this thing if you're just using scissors um, to cut your labels then that would be fine um, but you want to make sure that this is 
you know, no air bubbles, no pockets or anything like that. I'm trying to make right. it would help if I have a cameraman. It's all right. Take my word for it. I'm gonna do that. This part comes off. I hope I did that all right. You know, that actually worked out a lot better than I thought it would. So if you're just using scissors and you don't have the thermal thing and you're just doing this, especially if you're just doing this for yourself, um, this this might be the way to go. This looks pretty good. Um, we'll, give it a we'll give it a shot. All right, now here comes the fun part. And this is the part that's gonna be awesome. This is the silhouette portrait. Like I said, this is not an endorsement. This is just what I happen to use. Um, and this is the guide and the, the cutter here. If I open this up, there's a little blade right in there, like a little, that's about the size of like a, you know, needle. I have mine set to eight, but I'll, I'll show you what I have. I'll show you what I did here. Um, usually this contains a mat that you put your thing on to feed it through. I lost mine, but I have mine fine tuned because you can adjust this to uh, so many different lengths and levels. So you get it in there just like that. I don't know if I can hold both the paper and this because I have to hit this button right here. That kind of initiates it. And then you still have this open, right? Because <laughs> we need to come back to it now. Get a balance for me. No? Okay, that's fine. Uh, so there's this little icon up here. And that is the cut. Okay, we already printed. Skip the print. It's loaded in there. Now you can detect automatically. I like to detect manually. We're going to try to detect, detect automatically. What it is doing, it's going by the, the, the guidelines there. That line there. And it didn't find it. And then it would go across and find that up there too. Yeah, this thing's pretty loud. Come on. All right, didn't find it. That will probably say so over here. Nope, didn't say so over there. So detect manually. Using these arrows, you hear that sound? This this thing looking for it. And you want to put that blade right on top of that little black box there. Is that right? Yeah, that looks about right. All right. And then when doing so, detect. And this thing is super, super sensitive. Very sensitive, very sensitive, very touchy. Like your ex-girlfriend. What? So this way, so it just perfectly aligned where it is. So no matter how, like if you put it in a, at a wrong angle or just like you know, slightly different or something like that, that tells it exactly what it is. So it knows exactly where these cut marks are, where those cut marks are. That's all it cares. Again, it doesn't care what's printed on here. It just wants to cut where it's gonna tell it to cut. So we did that, cut page one, but I don't do this. In fact, you shouldn't do this either. What I do is I go over here to file. I go down to where it says cut settings. Because again, I have mine tuned in for, um, with the laminate that I use, I do 10, do 30, and then this says six. I showed you it was eight. I'm gonna go over here so we can see what I'm looking at. Because um, it also has the, like, oh, for magnets, for cardstock. You can, you know, you, can, you use this to make greeting cards and stuff, but I use it for labels. Um, cut at a 10, uh, thickness is 30, and then I have mine set to six, even though the blade says eight. And this is the setting I have. So what's gonna happen is the blade is gonna cut through the paper and the first layer of laminate, but not all the way through to the second layer of laminate. Um, pretty cool. You can do a test cut if you want. I'm just gonna do that. There we go. And hit cut. I'm gonna hit cut in three, two, one. Watch this. All right, there's one label. That's cool. This does cost a little bit of money. I paid just, uh, just a little bit over a hundred bucks for this thing. But time is money, and the quality you get, I think it's totally worth it. It's only telling it where I told it to cut. There you go. Hit this button to kind of spit it out there, and you can see where those cut lines are right around the label. That's sweet. All right, and then you can see there's a little bit more excess on that one. You know, maybe the Super Nintendo one as well, but... That is literally how I do my labels. Let's go ahead and apply a label right now just so I can show you. One thing I did want to point out too is when you have like multiple pages that are the same, you want to calibrate it every single time. Even though you have like say, you say maybe you made your own hack, you want to bring it to a convention. So you make a, you know, 10 pages worth of the same label. Um, you want to do that calibration setting every time, even though it's the same page and the same settings and all that. 
um, only because it's not the same place you put it in. Even if it's off by a millimeter, it'll cause you a lot of headache. Um, but this is the this is the thermal laminate. You can see what it looks like as far as quality goes. And then the other one, this is the sticker one. It's kind of hard to see, but you see how it's a little, like it doesn't look like it completely covered it. You can see why it's a little bit not as dark as this one. You know, kind of the bubbling going on. So just another thing to keep in mind uh, when you're laminating your papers. Game prepared. Brought a couple of games with me. One of them is the Bob's Burgers game, and I wanted to put it on a red card just for fun. So got my label here, and as you can see, I, I peeled it off, and it didn't cut through the paper, just only to that top layer, because, you know, so you have to, you know, fine-tune yours to the way to, so you, it'll make it so it works for you what you want it to work for. So here's this, and I made mine a little bit bigger, and this is why. Putting this on is one of the hardest parts of the whole process, and getting it to fit perfectly in that little square um, without it going over, without it going to the side, um, that happens a lot. So here's what I do. I get right in there. I mean, I get right in there. And I align this straight to the bottom of the thing. So I, I make it so it, like I just push it down until it's perfectly aligned to the bottom. And I stick it, do that. Now this top part of the label, that's the troublemaker. Um, some people have uh, uh, cut it slightly to fit over the top. Um, some might do a touch of like super glue. Now super glue may fade through the label eventually in time, but I don't know how many years, 20, you know, 10, 10 years, 20 years, I don't know how long it takes for it to do that. Um, and then my friend Eric Bishop, uh, Bishop Rose Repros, um, he's helped me out a lot in uh, making games uh, um, ever since I first started making repros. He sticks the label to the top. I mean, and you can stick it to the top, it's fine. And it might look like it's gonna fit perfectly at, for, at first, but he does that, and then he vacuum seals the whole game, so it has no choice but to pop up, but because the surface area is so small here, it's gonna wanna pop up. Um, so you might do like a touch of super glue if that's your thing. Um, the vacuum seal thing, uh, you know, totally works. I have done it in the past. I have done it several times where I just did this, and it stuck, and it stuck forever. Um, but that will, that's always gonna be a, a hard part for you. So whatever you need to do to get it to stick on there. Like I said, I do just a slight touch of super glue. May not be the best idea, um, but it's the idea that works best for me. <laughs> that's the way I look at it. So here you go. And now use your creativity. Um, like I said, you know, it would be cool to, even if you don't make repros, now you know how to make labels for games. So you can make your own uh, mock label for like, oh, here's, you know, what, Gears of War would have looked like if it was on a Nintendo system. Um, or, you know, here's, you know, you and your family as a Nintendo game. You can hang that up on the wall. A lot of things you can do when you make your own labels. Um, or, obviously, if you just need to make a replacement label. Um, I, I actually like finding games with ripped labels because that way it gives me creative freedom to make my own label. I love designing labels. So, again, um, there is a link on how to design labels uh, that I have um, in the description below and then uh, links to like where I found my silhouette portrait, if that's your thing. Again, not, not sponsored, not endorsed. Um, but there you go. How to make labels. Pretty cool. Um, big thanks to Eric Bishop for helping me out with um, how I started making labels. And also a huge, huge, huge shout out um, to uh, my friend Alex. Um, Alex was the one who told me about the silhouette portrait when I first started making labels and I was using like, you know, scissors to cut around the edges and everything. He's like, dude, you should invest in a silhouette portrait. So I did, um, now I haven't looked back. So Alex, thank you very much. And it also goes without saying, but I have to say it um, because a, a huge, huge, huge shout out to my Patreons. Uh, they are the ones who uh, bought the materials um, I used today, the, who uh, bought the lamination paper and the um, and the label paper. So uh, thank you for uh, thank you for being a Patreon. And if you're not a Patreon yet, maybe consider doing so for only a dollar. Get you early access to videos and exclusive contesting. In fact, my Patreons are going to have a chance to win this game I just now made. Not too late to sign up to be a Patreon now. You can do so in the uh, comments below as well. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care. We'll see you.